Hi, welcome to Joe's Drum Corner. I'm Joe, these are my drums, and this is the corner where the drums are kept. And uh, I thought I'd tell you a little bit about my history as the two-piece band thing, because I did quite a, I did, had quite a change in my whole approach to drumming when Amy and I decided, you know, let's, let's go forward as a two-piece band. And uh, I thought a great way to, uh, to do that would be to really change my whole approach to drumming and um, change everything about my drum set. Um, we had we were on this trip to Florida talking about how we were going to approach the idea of being a two-piece band, and we were in this music store, the same music store where Amy had actually purchased her 4003 Rick, and uh, there was a set of Roland V drums set up. And so I sat down and I put on little headphones, and I thought oh, I'll just bang around on these for a minute just to screw around, and I just thought they were amazing sounding. They 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 felt really great, and then the sound in the headphones it just was huge. It was like being in a stadium. So I thought, wow, I'm going to, uh, I should sell all my acoustic stuff and go completely electronic. And so that's what I did. And, and we played that way for, uh, I guess, probably about two, three or four years, just totally on the ele electronic drum set. And we went through our phase of, with keyboard and sequencer and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Previous to playing with the electronic set, my acoustic drums were set up in such a way that I felt like I was kind of behind the, the, the drums instead of on top of the set. Um, I'd been playing with power toms, which were basically just really, really deep tom toms. And on top, when you would take a 22 inch bass drum, which was the shell size that I happened to use, and put a 10 inch tall tom tom on top of that, you end up with the drum way up here. And to be able to hit it properly, the drum would have to be at an angle. So my drums ended up being way up in the air. My cymbals were up even higher and everything was, you know, I felt like I was sitting behind a cliff or something. It was this big wall of drum. <laughs> to the electronic drum set, all of a sudden I had these little, just little trigger pads that were about this big, and I could uh, sit more on top of the drum set, which was, which was really awesome. So for the first time in, in about 10 years, I felt like I was ac actually more comfortable at a drum set uh, because of the way I could position everything right where it was easy to get to, I could move around, I didn't have to do big stretches to get to stuff. Unfortunately though, for the purposes of, of what we were trying to achieve as a two-piece you know, rock band, I just felt like the acoustic or the electronic set didn't rock. Um, I really like the way that a drum set vibrates and um, from the, you know, the, the small town tom down to the floor tom, you know, you, you feel the vibrations. Uh, every time you hit the drum and you hit the snare drum, it's like a concussion type of a deal. And, you, it, and you know, that really helps drive that animalistic vibe that I think that, you know, as a, as a drummer that I like to go for. Um, and I, I, I gradually became more and more disenfranchised with the whole electronic drum set. So much so that when we did the one show we ever did as our whole electronic keyboard, electronic drum set setup, when it came time to play the gig, at the gig, I decided to play barefoot, which I had never ever played barefoot in practice. Um, I never played that way because I was always afraid to you know, chew my feet up on the chains on the bass drum pedals. But I felt so disassociated from the organic idea of drumming that I needed to introduce some sort of uh, animal behavior, I guess, back to the drum set. So I played barefoot <laughs> on my electronic drum set, thinking maybe that would be a way I could reconnect with the whole vibe. And, uh, and after we did that show, we decided, you know, this, this isn't quite the right, the right take, what we need to do. Once we, we had these songs, I think they were great songs, um, but 
it didn't translate the way we th we wanted it to translate. There was there wasn't the power and emotion that was coming out that we hoped it would come out. It became evident that then what I needed to do was replace the electronic drum set with an acoustic drum set. So I got my A uh, drum set with which had power toms because that's what I had been used to, used used to play, and I decided to get wood hoops with the set, which was a cool idea because they would give the drums a, even more of a woody type of a sound. I wanted to go get completely away from the electronics and get way into the whole, back into the acoustic thing. Um, the problem was with the power toms, uh, I had, again, I had deep shells. Then the wood hoops added about an inch to the top and the bottom. So now my drums are even higher than they used to be. And for a short time, I, well, actually for about the first year and a half, actually, I played the set with the three rack toms and one floor tom, because that's, that's the configuration I really liked. I actually used that um, configuration to record Blinded by Vision, but I had to have, the toms had to be up so high and angled so much for me to be able to hit them correctly in the, you know, in the sweet spot, and then the cymbals had to be that much higher above the drums that I spent all my time with my arms up in the air, which, you know, it, it, it got to be uh, uncomfortable playing that way. And I could never get the drums where I wanted them. I, I was always compromising. If I move this drum over here, I can't get it, you know, I can't get this thing in here if, if I keep the three rack toms. So I'm, I moved my one biggest rack tom down to a floor tom. So now I had two rack toms and a floor tom. But I was still constantly battling, trying to find different ways to angle and maneuver. And every time, like once a month, I think I would change the configuration of the drum set. And it, it was very frustrating. I could never get this, just could never get everything where I wanted it. So after we were done with the whole Blinded by Vision tour thing, decided I wanted to add to my uh, acoustic drum set. I wanted to add a smaller tom, an eight inch tom, and I also wanted to add a, a gong drum. Um, another, another problem I had with the A it set is a great sounding drum set, but um, I could never get the toms tuned to the pitches that I really wanted. I wanted to have really high tom and a really low floor tom, and I ended up more with kind of a low to mid-range type of vibe with that drum set. And I wanted to really get way up high and way down low. So instead of Amy's, at Amy's suggestion, which you know you gotta love love it when your bandmate says, "Hey, instead of adding to this drum set you're not happy with, maybe you should get a new drum set," you know, and that took me about a half a second to say, "Yeah, sure, great idea." So um, so I started looking around at drum sets. And I ended up with my DW set. You see back here. DW's attention to detail is is enormous, and I could I could probably talk at huge length for hours about that, but it, it might not be real interesting to most people. But suffice it to say that they, they have a huge attention to detail. One 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 thing that I think as mu musicians that that really struck me is that each shell on the inside of the shell has the note of that shell stamped inside. There's a the people at DW take take the shell go through their shells, they find out what note that shell is, they stamp it on the inside, and when you order a drum set, they get all the shells that have the same note cluster and stick them all together so that your drum set has the same pitch, which I just think, you know, wow, that's, that's pretty incredible. Plus, one thing that I really liked about them is that for every drum set they sell, they will plant a tree, and each tree has the potential to create 50 more drum sets, and I just think that that's such a great, responsible way to do to do business um it just you know it just it just made it that much much easier of a choice to pick the dw set so once i'd made made the decision yes i definitely want a dw drum set it came down to what configuration i started off with a with building up from the bass drum which is a 18 inches deep and 20 inch diameter the tom toms are 7 by 8 8 by 10 9 by 12. that way i can get the drums in right where i want them and, and more of a flat type of a style and play down on top of them and let gravity do a lot of the work for me. My floor toms are 13 by 13 and 16 by 16. And a gong bass drum, it's, it's a single headed shell with an oversized drum head on it. This is a, a 21 inch shell with a 22 inch head. And that extra inch around really lets the, the head vibrate and give you that nice oingy type of a sound. The snare drum is seven by 13. I think it, it, it's really expanded what I've always wanted my sound to be, and I think I've, I've finally achieved that with this setup. 